first news today comes from Iraq. Um, Shima Kasim has been receiving these chilling death threats in a campaign that uh, they they they're suspecting is targeting Westernized women in uh, in the Middle East. Uh, in a video clip, Kasim told her 2.7 million followers on Instagram that women in the country are being slaughtered like chickens, and branded Ferris, um, who was killed September 27th. Uh, she's the latest victim of violence targeting secular women living in Iraq. Uh, branded her a martyr. Uh, Ms. Ferris had also spoken out against religious, uh, tribal, and political leaders. Okay, so n not to be confused with last week's uh, news. Last week we had uh, one of the, these models um, executed in, in, in daylight, right, in her car. Somebody shot right. her. And now we're getting th this. Uh, another model in Iraq is now she's getting death threats, and she's very scared. And I think rightfully so. She's the how many people? How many models so far been killed in Iraq? Well, there's been uh, five women now in the beauty industry in in, uh, in Iraq that have been that have been killed that are um, suspected. Uh, uh, there's, it's, it's suspected that they are done for religious reasons um, because all of these women are very uh, westernized. They're, they they take pictures of themselves. They post them uh, publicly on the Internet. Everybody knows who they are, where they are, and so it, it really makes them an, an easy target for uh, for fundamentalists to, to, to send messages. Uh, right, but... First, first, I don't know if I like the word term westernized. This is just, I mean, I don't think that the West o uh, owns the idea of women being free to dress and wear what they want, right? I think this is just women being being independent and acting the way and you know looking the way they want, right? I think this is sure. a, a global concept. It, it's not the West. <laughs> Uh, I think the people that call them westernized are people like I I in Iraq they're trying to say like this is not our, our culture this is a western culture right but if your culture teaches you that you could get to tell women what to wear and how to look like then that's a shitty culture uh, sure well i mean you know our uh our culture here where i live in in the united states you know it's it's far from uh a reflection of of true equality but compared to other places, you know, women have have much more rights. And with the the, the new age of uh, technology and the internet, women from all over the world are seeing American women empowering uh, um, each other. And I don't I don't know that that most American women, whenever they they post publicly like that, they don't realize that they have not only you know a, a viewing in the United States, but a na uh, an international viewing, and and it's empowering these other women, you know, overseas, saying, well, if if these women can can get equality, and they're they're they are this happy and they're able to express themselves and then right. i should be able to as well right so yeah so you're saying it's a, um, these other countries are a source of inspiration um but yeah but uh so uh, some people might point out that none of these have been resolved yet none of nobody like we're saying these are religious crimes but nobody's been arrested so far how right. these threats um so how are we saying it's religious well, the investigation has not happened yet, but the Iraqi Prime Minister uh, Al Abadi said that he is launching an investigation into a possible link between the murders. So, um, as a matter of fact, he said, and I quote, that uh, that there is evidence suggesting that there is a plan formulated by organized parties to undermine security under the pretext of fighting against depravity. Um, so he, he he and the other the other investigators that are are looking into this uh, are already going into this with the belief that there there is a link between these these murders amongst these women in the beauty right. community. So they, so for for people that criticize us and tell us that like oh you guys are just labeling this as religious even though with, uh, without the investigation. The Iraqi police and the Iraqi government they are looking at this as as if it's religious. Um, so, I mean, their assumption, I mean, obviously nothing is 100%, but Occam's razor, you know, if you apply Occam's razor, this is Iraq, these women are within the beauty industry, they're being targeted. I mean, that's the, that's the safest bet that this is something religious, right? Right. Uh, and, and, and this particular woman became a target in 2015 when she won Miss, uh, Miss Iraq. 
So she's she's been a target since then. But um, since these these other murders have happened, the amount of, of threats that she's received have have gone up. In fact, she's receiving text messages that are saying uh, you're next. Oh, yeah, that's that's what she's getting. Like, so so far, that's the message that she got on her phone that you're next. That yes, you're that's so fucking scary, isn't it? Like, you already know that they've been successful at killing other other women and you're now being a target also there was this high profile i don't know somebody from iraq in arabic they tweeted like why is everybody so up i'm not exactly quoting this but this was the tweet that uh, a lot of people point to i think it was a high profile person i don't know if it was a politician or somebody saying that well these are just whores that are being shot like what? Like as in what? Why is everybody being upset about this? Right? Like yeah, so yeah. See, that's that. That's the mentality, though. Is if you if you can dehumanize the the person, then it makes the attack seem seem less vile than it than it really is. Right. But I'm saying even with the, even among people that with obviously a lot of people in Iraq in Iraq are condemning this, right? But there's a whole bunch of other people within Iraq that don't see this as a problem might even see it as uh, like as a vigilante justice, like uh, somebody doing a public service to make sure that uh, the, the girls think twice between before they were, I mean, uh, Right. I mean, it's it's like you said last week, you know, in a sense, these are our uh, honor killings. Right. They are. I mean, I don't know if people understand, like the way these uh, women are dressing uh, for a lot of us. This is like not even that. Obviously, they should be able to dress whatever they want. But even by standards that some people have here about what is considered too sexual, which I don't think there should be any standard at all. But the they're not that out there you know what i mean but uh, a lot of people when somebody just shows their body and expresses their uh expresses themselves in in this way for a lot of people uh, in iraq or in countries around there they see that like the as these are just the worst of the worst they call them whores they call them prostitutes uh and they think like it doesn't like it doesn't matter you're just cleaning up right that's what they see it as um, I mean, even the people that are not, among many of the people that would not do the killing themselves, they think that whoever is doing it could be is justified, uh, which is, you know, another, another problem with this is that this actually works, right? Like, first of all, nobody has been captured yet, right? Second of all, these people are winning because I'm pretty sure even a lot of women that wanted to, like, uh, push the boundaries and bring more freedom and be- become more independent and show inspire more people that they could express themselves the way they want i think more and more people that were considering this are now gonna think twice before doing anything like this right and i and i you can't blame them like we sit in here be like no show them don't let them scare you don't let them you know be who you want we don't negotiate with terrorists but yeah, you say we're saying that from a position of safety, right? But these, I mean, absolutely. Well, I mean, and, and these are women. You know, none of these women came out unscathed. Every single one of these women died. None were shot at. You know, they were shot. They were they were killed. And so, yeah, I mean, uh, other women are are looking at this, and as much as they they want to feel empowered, and as much as they want to be able to express themselves freely, especially in the way that they dress, they uh, they. They really have have no option but to to shut down. I mean, because it, it obviously so far justice hasn't been served in these. And like you said, these these people are, are are getting away with it, and they're and they're very successful in their in their in their actions. Right. Let me see what the fa- top comment is on Facebook. Oh, by the way, let me bring the Facebook live chat as well. I don't want them to feel like we're ignoring them. Um, all right. Okay, so top comment is by Rebecca. Oh no, the top comment is by Elwin. Uh, says peaceful Islam. Rebecca is saying, and obviously that's he's being. Uh, it's an oxymoron. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, but yeah, but obviously they're making fun of Islam. Rebecca is saying the headline could have been uh, worded better. I thought 
I was able, well, yeah, we didn't pick the headline. These are articles that we posted from, where was it? From this was uh, by the Sun World News. Okay, so Rebecca is commenting about the headline. The headline could have been uh, worded better. I thought I was able to, able about to read an article about a beauty queen sending death threats. Okay, that's a criticism on the headline and the article. Uh, I just so Saif is saying I just can't understand wh uh, why did Rafif, Tara, and Rasha all R.I.P. stayed here in Iraq. Okay, so Saif himself is in Iraq, and he's saying I don't understand why these women stayed in Iraq uh, when when they could have afforded to leave. Too bad they had this tragic, untimely end. I mean, well, I can't comment on that because I don't know what situation they were going through. But uh, obviously, I mean, they, they must have had their reasons. What do you think? Right. Well, I mean, they were obviously successful in their career. They were obviously successful in whatever they were doing. You know, they were business owners. They were successful models, popular models. I mean, and at the same time, you know, if you live in a country that you love, that your family is from, and you're seeing it um, uh, act in a way that's, uh, that's contrary to what you deem to be moral, then... I don't know about you, but I myself would do everything that I could to to make an example of of how things should be instead of just running from the problem and allowing allowing the uh, extremists to win. Right. Yeah. Good. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, but that's a decision for them to make, right? Obviously, if somebody uh, wants to leave Iraq, um, uh, we nobody should tell them that. Oh, you should have stayed and fight, right? Because obviously it's their life. They get to and but and if anybody wants to stay and fight, um, I mean I think that's admirable. And I think uh, it, just because we wouldn't advise that for ourselves, I don't think we get we should be. Um, we we don't make, get to make that decision for somebody else. Obviously, we we if somebody is taking risks that they don't know they're taking, we want to let them know what risks they're taking. But if somebody is aware of the risk that they're taking and they still decide to fight, I don't think we get we 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 I don't think we it's justified for us to tell them that they made the wrong decision. I think we just have to thank them, right? Because they are. They know the risk. They're taking the risk. I mean, every single rights we enjoy today is because somebody at some point took a risk for it, right? Uh, but by the way, Nusantara sent us a super chat, $5. Thank you so much, Nusantara. It says, this is why the progressive pro-Islam narrative needs to be destroyed before any progress can be made on reforming Islam in the Middle East. Well, I don't think you can reform Islam. I think you have to defeat Islam, but I, I, I agree with the rest of that. Atheist Republic's mission is to give atheists around the world a louder voice. In order for us to be able to continue the Atheist Republic, we need your help. If we reach 100 patrons, we'll finally be able to afford all our costs. Help us get there.